there's a corner of Southeast Asia that seems almost immune to the tectonics that are impacting the region. It's Thailand's Gorat Plateau, a part of the Indochina continental block. You can see what I mean if we step back to look at the earthquakes. Here's the Horat Plateau in the heart of Indochina. Now, of course, this area is made of the assembly of continental blocks that make up the East Asian mainland. This is assembly that happened long before the modern tectonic regime that relates to India's collision. So let's take a look at the Khorat Plateau. It's a bit of a misnomer. It's low ground compared to Tibet. It's only a couple of hundred metres above sea level. But the elevations around the margin are enough to influence the course of the Mekong River and modern ranges, deformed crust, appear to wrap around the plateau. The region has been important for its gas reserves and is now being scoped for underground geostorage of CO2, all of which means that there are deep wells and seismic imagery that reveal the subsurface. So let's consider a profile across the plateau. First, beware being too impressed by the scale of folding. This section has been vertically stretched to help see the structure. But the rocks are crumpled. What happens below? A series of wells have been drilled, and these show some Triassic Age basins below that blanket of younger rocks. And there's more. A set of Permocarboniferous basins that date from the amalgamation of Southeast Asia. So what's going on? Those folds that come to the Earth's surface have elevated older Cretaceous rocks in green on the sections up to outcrop. These bumps were attractive to the explorers of gas reserves. But the uplifted rocks overlie the basins that host the Permocarboniferous rocks below, areas of former subsidence, not uplift. Just to show this with less vertical stretching, but still with some vertical exaggeration, you can see the elevated Cretaceous in green overlying the basins at depth. So let's now consider a typical representation with folded green Cretaceous rocks above the basin rocks below. We can identify the fault types. These are normal faults which help to form the basins below. These are thrusts which relate to later squashing. The squashing that folds the Cretaceous rocks at outcrop. And this major fault has a bit of both. It's a former normal fault partially reactivated as a thrust. We can take off the squash, restore the basin to show its former shape. And all the faults now are normal faults. The compressional reactivation of these normal faults is termed inversion tectonics, switching the sense of movement on the faults, squashing the basin, elevating the rocks on top. This inversion tectonics has been really important for resource development and may well be important again by providing structures that could host CO2. Regardless of these opportunities in applied geology, the Horat Plateau reveals that it has indeed deformed along with the rest of Asia, just a bit weakly, and the deformation is controlled by its earlier basin structures. It's a great illustration of how pre-existing faults can control later tectonics, the tectonics associated with continental collision.